Now the group stages are done and we saw drama down to the final games as well, especially in Group F where the table finishes with Portugal and Turkey in first and second respectively. But Georgia in their first ever Euros have clinched a spot in the last 16 where they will face Spain and that came courtesy of a 2-0 win over Portugal, a Portugal team that had made eight changes. However, Cristiano Ronaldo did still start in that game. Let's welcome in Julian Laurent. He is here with us tonight and uh, lots to talk about here when it comes to this achievement, Craig, from Georgia. What an achievement it is. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, yes, Portugal made some changes because they, they had topped the group and that was common sense. We'll get to the Ronaldo side of it who did play uh, a little bit later. Uh, but still, that's a lot to do. There's a lot of good players, a lot of experienced players in that Portuguese side. Uh, but Carrot Squalier, getting them off, I know, getting them off to a great start uh, early on, just set the format for them. And they, they were even, when they got the second goal from a, from a penalty, which was uh, reviewed by VR, uh, they, they huffed and puffed and they were always a threat. And, I think it's an absolutely brilliant story, and can I can I mention Scotland? Uh, and I know you're probably thinking why, uh, <laughs> and most people are probably thinking why bother. Uh, Georgia were in Scotland's group, and Scotland beat them by nine points in total in the group stages. And I've seen a lot of Scottish supporters and Scottish journalists bemoaning the fact that how can, Georgia have got four points and we we beat them by nine points in the group, but they've done it where it mattered. It's, it's the old golf analogy. Drive for show and putt for dough. And the qualifiers are the qualifiers. And, and yes, Scotland were pretty strong in the qualification, but they got one point in their group stage. And maybe they could argue their group was slightly harder with Germany and Switzerland in particular. Uh, but it shows that when you get to these tournaments, that this is where your bread is buttered. And Georgia have taken advantage of the Portuguese strength in the first two games. They've taken advantage of the changes within that team. And they went out and grabbed qualification by the scruff of the neck. And that is a brilliant achievement. It really, I mean, fair play to them, Shaka, because even before the game, we were saying, I mean, if they win, things look mm -hmm. really good for them, but that is if they win against yeah. this Portugal team. I, in all honesty, I, I don't think there was a lot of discussion around, around Georgia winning. It, it was really about, well, Portugal topped the group unless, unless there's this what, five or six goal swing with, with Turkey who are in second. Um, and it's just about Portugal kind of managing personnel, making changes. Georgia, it was nice having you along for the tournament. Um, congrats on your debut. But then all of a sudden, uh, Kavaskelia gets, gets it, there's this goal two, two minutes in and the entire, the entire conversation just changes. And, and while Portugal certainly had the dominant, um, were dominant in the possession, had the, the bulk of chances, Manajvili again outstanding, it, it was about this kind of plucky Georgian performance that they never really laid down. They, they, they kept plugging away, defended well when they had to. And it, maybe it shows to, to Craig's point about, about comparisons, sometimes the draw favours you. And playing the, the group favourite in the last game has its benefits because if it plays out as you would expect, what you get is a weakened group favourite in, in, in the third game. But Georgia had to, had to come up big when, when it mattered and, and, and they did. And for a tournament that's given all kinds of twists and turns, I think this is just a wonderful story for a smaller nation um, in, in getting through to, to the knockout stages. Yeah, Jules, already in these groups, we've seen some brilliant underdog stories, and this is up there with the best of them. This is just extraordinary from Georgia. Uh, it's one of the best ever. There, there is no doubt. First ever participation, as we've been saying, to the Euros, what, to a major tournament. And for them to, to make it to the last 16, even if with the third place, I know it's not how it used to be with just the top two of each group qualifying. It's still incredible. And when Willy Sagnol, who's French, by the way, just if you were wondering if, if every behind <laughs> all good stories is a Frenchman, you're right. You are right. Um, but when he took over in, in February 2021, I think he saw 
Well, he saw one X factor in Varskelia, of course, who is by far the best player in that squad. He saw maybe a good player in Miko Tadze, who plays in France, who was born in France from Georgian parents and decided to play for Georgia. And then I think he saw a good squad with some youngsters, some experience. Obviously, the captain is 36 now, who can, who can create a good collective team, basically, and a good collective. And if on top of this really good collective where you play deep, for sure, but you defend well and you fight for each other and you've got that kind of commitment, on top of that, if you add the talent of Miko Tadze and Kvaskelia and maybe a couple of others, then everything is possible, really. And they've showed that in these Euros. All their three games have been fantastic to watch. I think we would all agree on that. They've got the best goalkeeper in the tournament. In Miko Tadze, they've got the top goal scorer in the tournament. They completely deserve to be in the last 16. It's an incredible story. It really is. And uh, you mentioned in that age 36 there with the captain, there was an older player than that today on the pitch and his name was Cristiano Ronaldo, starting despite the fact that Portugal had already pretty much topped that group, Craig. Yeah, and didn't, didn't do anything. I think Roberto Martinez got some answers about the French players, uh, so that's a concern for him. I think that Ronaldo role is still a concern. It has been, he hasn't been brilliant in the, 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 the group stages. Uh, you know, you would imagine he would have got a full rest today, bearing in mind his age. But clearly he said, and we've discussed this at length, I think he decides pretty much when he plays. Uh, obviously he didn't decide to come off and, and, and uh, was taken off just over the hour mark and, and was not a happy chappy. Uh, in fact, was through a little bit of a tantrum on the touchline. And you would think to yourself, and, and this is just, Christian, with all respect, this is just Cristiano Ronaldo worrying about his personal stats. That's all, that's, that's, that's all it is, because if he still sees himself, and I'm sure he does, as the linchpin in this Portuguese side, it's not about him padding his stats in the final group game against, and by the way, you see that he got booked as well, for a tantrum over a non-call by, by the referee, who, by the way, he might as well just put the yellow card on his forehead tonight, the referee, when walking around with it, because it was out all the time, there was red cards out at the end. But, you know, from Ronaldo's perspective, the tantrums that he's throwing, or the, the mini tantrum he threw when he came off, it, it's just saying to me, to him it's more about, and I'm not saying he's not passionate about his country. He is, and you can see that in the amount of games and goals he's scored. But this is not about him getting on the score sheet. This is about him being ready at his best, because he's going to play, in the knockout stages. And when a manager takes you off and, you know, all these sort of things, it's because he's trying to protect having the strongest team in the knockout. And yet I feel, still feel, to me, a lot of this for Ronaldo is about improving his stats, improving his goals. And, and, and maybe there is something to that. But the bigger picture is, it's more important for Portugal to be fresh and strong, not whether he gets on the score sheet or not. So Again, the, the, the way that Roberto Martinez is going to manage this, and it's not been a major problem thus far because the group has been quite simple for them, the way that he's going to manage this, if things get very tight in the knockout stages, is going to be really interesting. And by the way, you, we've got uh, Czechia Turkey on in the background. I think that's where all the cards were coming out at the end in that game, right? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, oh. it's fine. We've got a few games going on at once. This is what <laughs> happens when all the games are being played at the same time. I, was think I saw that referee with the... Uh, on the, when we were painting the pictures over there, I saw the yellow card, <laughs> and then I was watching that, and I just thought, because that other game, was, <laughs> that, that game was that yeah. other game. There was, was, there was a lot going on there as well, and there's a few things to discuss there. But when it comes to Ronaldo, do you really think it is something like that, Jules? That he's deciding that he's actually getting asked, do you want to play this game or not? hundred percent. There, are, there is no head coach in the whole world who would think. We've qualified, we've topped the group. My, 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 my captain, my best player, well, best player, you know, my player is 40 years old. What should I do? Should I start him in a game where he can get injured, sent off, um, I don't know, miss loads of chances, which would knock his confidence, maybe like, loads of negative things, really. Yeah, let's start him. What a great idea. This was a madness that Cristiano was on the pitch, and that's definitely his choice. And like Greg, like Greg said, when he came off after 65 minutes or so, he was even still unhappy. So if he was fully down to him, he would have played the whole 90 minutes, which makes no sense whatsoever. And if I'm Roberto Martinez, this is even the wrong message I'm sending to my dressing room, to my squad, to my players, because everybody can see then that Cristiano does whatever he wants.